I've had four large trash cans sitting on my front lawn or my front walk for a week or so. And that's because I've been working up the emotional fortitude to mix this biochar, which is what you see here inside, with the giant pile of compost over there. Essentially, it's high rise condos for mycorrhizal fungi, bacteria, and moisture, which makes a really drought tolerant lawn possible. That's my dog Aspen. She's mad that she's tied to a tree currently. If you can see the kind of dust rising from this as I touch it, that's why we're gonna put on N95s in a second when I dump this very dusty thing over there <laughs> into the compost. It does feel like a fantasy movie, like the demon is being unleashed. Didn't really mean for, to put that in my pathway, but that's fine, I can rake it out. Okay, let's do another one over here. John from Go Biochar, he makes biochar out of a shipping container on the west side. There's a thing called a pyrolyzer, which is basically a very fancy oven, and it takes wood biomass, things like tree limbs that fall, or wood chips from arborists. So it feeds right up there. Yep. And it heats it up to a level where it actually fixes the carbon. And so normally when a tree falls in the forest, the carbon would eventually break down and some of the carbon that the tree has sequestered throughout its lifetime is actually re-released back into the atmosphere. With biochar, it will never be re-released, which means you're actually preventing the release of carbon into the atmosphere. It can literally look just like oh, what you're getting out of your fire. That's so pretty. Which means it's actually a carbon negative product, if you think about it, which is pretty sick. If I'm gonna get really nerdy, biochar is actually entering the carbon market for that reason. So companies who want to purchase carbon credits in order to offset carbon emissions or whatever can actually purchase or invest in biochar related endeavors because it's doing some good stuff for the world. What I really like about biochar is that it's actually the one-two punch of it being a carbon negative product and it also being really, really good for the soil. I think that's a wonderful double-ended solution. Once I mix this with the compost, all of the microbial activity in the compost, the beneficial fungi, bacteria, and things that are already in there are going to basically absorb and live into this very sort of charcoal absorbent spongy product that you see here. 20% by volume biochar and soil. So it's already ready to go. So. That's what I need. This suspicious looking white powder is micronized azomite, and that's a trace mineral that helps with nutrient uptake in plants. It's really kind of the closest thing I have to soil witchcraft when mixed with biochar and compost. So my super scientific method, and maybe John from Go Biochar is gonna kind of come for me with this, is to just go like this. Am I measuring? No, no, I am not. It's like baby powder. And honestly, I'm calling that good enough because I'm gonna rake it all out over my landscape and that's gonna do what it needs to do. Whenever this gets wet in a rainstorm or through irrigation, it's going to slow release that moisture back to my plants, which will extend the length of time I need to water. And that's why I like biochar. This is totally normal, what I'm doing. This is a totally normal way for a 31 year old woman to spend time 